Hello, dear friends. God bless you in the Lord Jesus' name. Something is put on my heart to discuss today, and this is the topic of hate. And what Jesus Christ said, we must love our enemies. It is very hard sometimes to love our enemies. Though there are some scriptures I want to read with you. Because if you read these scriptures and understand them, then you'll know why it's so important that we love. Even our enemies, we must love them. It is written in the book of Psalms, verse, uh, chapter 109, verse 5. This is Jesus Christ speaking in the Psalms. And thus they hate. And thus they have repaid me evil for good, and hate and hatred for my love. Psalms 109 verse 3. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without cause. That's how you know that this scripture is talking about Jesus. Because you know they hated him without a cause and they killed him the healer the lord they killed him on a cross dear friends <laughs> psalms twenty five nineteen. look upon my enemies for they are many and they hated me with violent hatred there's always going to be people in this life you know, that are violent, that are full of hate. They want to steal, kill, and destroy, and murder. They would happily take advantage of a good Samaritan, of a good heart. But we still have to continue on and do as Jesus Christ said and love our enemies. This is being poor in spirit. You know you're poor in spirit because these individuals have nothing to give you. They are bad. They do wicked all the time. They hate God. They may even curse God. They may even not believe that he is who he says he is. But in the end, they will reap darkness, destruction. Uh, they will go into the abyss. And it is very sorrowful that these individuals want to be this type of individual. You know, we cannot love the world we have to love jesus more than self more than the world uh, more than television self uh, luxuries uh, gold uh, tv movies sports entertainment more than luxuries in this life more than our family all too often people love their family and their friends more than God and they will do sin because their family, their friends or their co-workers are doing sin but Jesus Christ said that he hates sin I could pull up the scripture where Jesus Christ says that sin is death and he hates all sin God hates all sin and if you want to know Jesus then we must also hate sin and be like Jesus and so to, conti to continue discussing hate, you know, um, some Christians are in church and they're oblivious to the words of Christ. Unfortunately, they only get fed the words of what the preacher man or the preacher lady is teaching. And so they are devoid of the scriptures because they're, they're not maybe uh, praying upon these scriptures in a, in a quiet place at home. There's various reasons. But we should not hate. We cannot hate the strangers, um, those who do wicked, uh, those who do evil, you know, those who boast, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. The arrogant and the prideful cannot stand with the holy. It just doesn't work. Outside of the kingdom of God are those that uh, continue to do sin, the murders, the thieves. The fornicators, the ones that fornicate with the Antichrist, and the ones that fornicate with uh, demonic spirits in this world. But we cannot hate, no matter what it is. This is the poverty of spirit. This is being poor. We are poor. And we love Jesus more than loving ourselves. The world will hate you because the world hates truth. 
the world wants nothing to do with truth. You know, it's written in the scriptures. And then many will be led into sin and will betray one another and will hate one another. You can rebuke sin. You can call upon the name of Jesus Christ to help you, to save you from sin. He will save you. He will purify you. He will give you teachings, great understandings. If you fear God, this is the beginning of wisdom. If you fear God, you will hate all sin. That's written in the scriptures. Keep in mind of Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. This is, okay, pride, arrogance, and the evil way. And the froward mouth do I hate. To fear God is also the beginning of wisdom. If you hate evil, you will become wise in the teachings of Jesus Christ. If you are faithful to him, but you have to be faithful and wait upon the Lord Jesus Christ. This was put in my heart. I wanted to talk about this because many people claim to be Christians, but they are super arrogant and they love to hate. And it's a pointless hate. I mean, really pointless hate, you know, like. People hate random things, you know, commercials, uh, actors, actresses. We don't have to hate the world because we're in the world. Some people hate, you know, sports teams, like, with a fervent hate. Some people hate, you know, you know, certain things that are just kind of, you know, not worth the salt to hate. Um, we should hate Pride, arrogance, sin, the froward mouth, like a mouth that is speaking wickedly. Evil is sin, and it is death, dear friends. I want to also read a very excellent parable. I'm going to skip the parable right now and do that in another video. Um, I want to continue on talking about the fear of the Lord. It is written in the scriptures of Luke, chapter 12, verse 5. It is written, But I am warning you about whom you should fear. Fear the one who has who he has killed and has the power to throw into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Christ has the power to not only take us from this earth, though he wishes us a good and fruitful life, if we die, when we die, he has the power to take our spiritual body, our soul, and cast it into hell. And that, my friend, is not a good place. There is tears, there is weeping. It is outside of the kingdom. And we must press into the kingdom of God right now. Press into the kingdom. The violent come and take the kingdom by force. But we are spiritual and we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities of wickedness in places that are very high above us in spiritual realms, dear friends. But we must keep the faith, fight the good fight, and follow after Jesus Christ with all diligence. And do not sin any longer. Jesus will give you holy dreams. He will purify you. He will speak to you. He will touch you. He will guide you. He will be a father. He will be Abba. Or as people say, I am. Ihaye. He will be your father, dear friends. And Jesus is a wonderful Lord. He is a wonderful father to his children. He does not leave us with nothing. He takes care of us. And he wants us to be filled with joy in his spirit. This is the Holy Spirit, dear friends. I encourage you to get evil out of your life and repent of your sins, your past sins. Stop doing sins. There's only one Lord. There's only one Savior. This is Jesus, dear friends. And Jesus will teach you the way. It is a narrow way. It is narrowly found. Going to church will not save you. Reading your scriptures will not save you. They are helpful to lead you, to point you to Jesus Christ. 
and another person cannot save you, though it is a great idea to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. And then follow Jesus. Don't follow evil family members, evil on television, or self-worship of self and luxuries in this life. Jesus Christ will purge you of those sins. Of, I'm, I'm sorry, of those sins. He will purge you and uh, he will teach you the right path so that you can be in the kingdom because the doors are closing, dear friends. The doors are closing. There will be a time when we will be either in the kingdom or locked out of the kingdom. And those who are locked out of the kingdom will suffer. They will mourn for their lives and what they have done to betray the only salvation that will ever be in this time period, dear friends, and ever. After this time period, it's over. And this is our one life that we should live for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, fear the Lord. Do not do evil, but love your enemies anyway. They need love. If we don't have love in this wicked world, it will be 100% chaos. It will be 100%. And that's a fact. May your prayers come to Jesus Christ. Be blessed and get to know him on your knees. Pray with diligence. Wait for him on this narrow path and he will guide you into all the truths you need to live. He will feed you his body and he will give you his blood covering. God bless you in this new year in Jesus Christ's name.